Hello, John. Hello. Good week? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump in to talk about a band that were at the top of your world of psychobilly, the Meteors. Well, yeah. So, when and how were you introduced to them? It was 1983 when I, I videoed them at the Hellfire Club, Wakefield. We'd never seen anything like them. They invented, well, we think he invented, uh, the word psychobilly. It, it became known, I would say, there was 50 or 60 bands wow. in it. He was the top of the, uh, the bands. So, in 1983 then, where were they in their careers? Had they just begun or was it well established? Uh, I think they'd three or four years. Oh, so they have been going for a while, but... Yeah, while. yeah. So when you saw them in 1983 and recorded them at Hellfire Club, um, what was Sackabilly well on its way to become an established subgenre? It was some of the punk which went into Psychobilly. Psychobilly and punk, they were related, but they weren't quite exactly. And what was your initial reaction to this style of music that was new to you guys? <sighs> I was knocked out. Tattoos he had were, were, were fantastic. So at that point, was that all quite a new world for you then? Oh, yeah. 40 years of my thing was uh, constantly something new. And is it safe to say that instantly when you saw the meteors, you were a fan? Or did it grow on you over time? It grew on me all the time, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as I saw other bands. So that first initial reaction was, this is interesting, but it was all quite alien and new for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. After you see them live in 1983, did you pay much mind to them after that? No, well, no, um, we didn't. Until 87, they appeared with On Cherry Bread. They'd stayed uh, for many years. What do you think caused that four-year gap between 83 and 87? It was building. Building up to the 87, 88. That was when he had the, uh, the fire in it. That was when the club foot was opening and, right. you know. So it was still quite nebulous in those days. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was starting to flourish by 87. Yeah, 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 yeah. So was it roughly around that time you started to really pay attention? Yeah, yeah. I started to look at uh, what John Curd was doing with the, the Club Fort, the Night of the Long Knives. They were very good uh, scenes. And these scenes where you have like 50, 60 bands all playing this, this cycle billy, was that thanks to the Meteors or were they part of something that they rose to the top of? I, I think you've got to have the top, the Meteors, and the Guana bands were number two. The, the, the scene that grew out of it was, was fantastic. And so did they bring prominence to the club foot or was the club foot becoming well established already? I think it was well established already. OK, so tell us a bit about the shoot you did in 1987. <sighs> this was our first promo with them. They got a, a massive crowd. There was about 50 people there. They were in the Chelsea Wharf, London. It was a lovely day and a swimming pool. They were dancing around and going around in circles. It was a fantastic show. So that was the first promo you guys did together then? Yeah, 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 yeah. How was the promo received? Went down fantastic. Yeah, because I imagine by 88, sorry, 87, they're already quite well established by Yeah, they were, they were. Quite a strong following and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at that time, uh, did, did that workload pick up because of their signing to Cherry Red or had they been signed the entire time? No, they, uh, they were signed to other people, but I forgot, I forgot who they were. The psychobilly was in its 87 and 88. Uh, that, that is the peak of it. When they went in the club foot that night and we had the three cameras. It was fantastic. Blood coming out of his mouth and, <laughs> you know. And when they played at the club foot, would they be the ones headlining? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. OK, so you've done this 87 promo and you've seen them here and there at the club foot. So what comes next for you guys' relationship? It was Rawhide. We just made it and filmed them, three of them sitting on a, a park bench, looking down at the cows all, and, and riding through a field on a horse with a guitar. 
<laughs> it was um, it was bloody good. And we filmed it in the house and various other places. I, I was down south somewhere. I can't remember where, but... Uh, did you um, enjoy doing these promos together? I, I, I did do, yeah, yeah. I did do. Tell us about the Sacco Billy compilation called Night of the Long Knives. Well... We had an appearance, top of the league, uh, the Meteors, and he decided to stay. You know, he, he had this thing about psychobilly and not being associated with everyone else. Finally got round to accepting it. I, I was glad. So oftentimes he would like not want his name on certain things? Yeah. He wouldn't be associated with the club foot. He didn't like it by 88. He was obviously concerned. OK. So now the Long Knives is just a collection of all these bands that play yeah. the club foot. Yeah, uh, and the best. With Meteors right at the top. Yeah, yeah. And then Guana Bats yeah. second behind yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Did their headline spot gain a lot of attention for Jay Sounds? When these things were occurring, they um, were just a, a small portion of it. But uh, over time, it's grown. Had Sacco Billy become one of your main focus points? By 1989, 90. When you look at the whole music industry, they only played a part of it. You know, like Punk did, and Punk stayed alongside it. I think Psychobilly has stayed. So, after the release of Night of the Long Knives, does anything else happen between you two? We made three promos. Luckily, we had John Danforth. He took over all that I did because it was good. So what what role does John Davenport play in this then? Uh, he was a cameraman. Right. He was very good, right. very good. Please Don't Touch was uh, fantastic. And they had gone to a, a motorbike shop. Everyone turned up on motorbikes. There was about 20 of them there. They all had a good time. Please don't touch, but based around motorbikes. So with the meteors, a bit of like this kind of biker gang image. Yeah, yeah. And known as cattle. Yeah. So that explains the cows in the program. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was chainsaw boogie, which was cut between the uh, psychobilly and dancing uh, of the club foot. I think it was. I I don't really like that one. What is it about you don't like? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there was so much was used from the uh, live foot. You you would have preferred more than yeah, the shots. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who do you love? Fantastic one. The, the, the straw hide, because I did it. I think the who do you love uh, was fantastic. They went on an airfield somewhere. I went in a hangar that was falling to bits. Um... Some blacks out and... With all the face paint. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. I think it's probably the best one I like. And um, was that video the last piece of work that you guys did together? Well, yes, yes, it was. It was. So I guess it's nice that your professional work ended on a highlight. Yeah, yeah. His hair fell out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, but he continues to this day. I, I, I like him. Yeah. I like him a lot.